Hi, I'm going to be demonstrating use of my shortcut called memory, which is a shortcut that can store data for variables across shortcut runs, persistent variables. So we can do a shortcut run, we can do some computation with some data, and then we can store that so that when we next run the shortcut, we'll be able to access it again. If you'd like to know more about that, then read my blog post on this, which is in the description. And you can download this shortcut from wonkylogic.co. I'll be using this shortcut here, Memory Tester, to demonstrate the use of this shortcut. This is quite an interesting concept. The method for storing data is reminders. We store the data in the notes field for a reminder, which is quite an interesting concept. Um, in my blog post, I actually compare some different ways of using persistent shortcuts. There are some possibilities, um, but yeah, this, uh, this is the best one in my opinion. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. Okay, so you can see in the note there, if we go into this, there's the note, okay. There's essentially stringified JSON in that note, and that's how it stores the data. So I'll be showing you how I can add and retrieve data from that note using memory. The shortcut memory is available on wonkylogic.co, so you can download it there, add it to your library. Okay, so if you if we have a quick look at what's in here already, just to get a feel for how it was working, I've got data for a variable called test var2. There's the payload key. The payload is just this number, which is stored as a string. That's the number. Then I have another variable here, cycle log. Okay, so this is information about my cycling. So the payload for this is actually another dictionary. Can you see that We've got a stringified dictionary in there. Okay, I'll try and get the end of it. So number of rides, 142. So that's the number of cycle rides completed and average speed, 20 kilometers per hour. Okay, so you can store data in here. So I can add, update those values by using memory and I can retrieve those values also by using memory. So how do we use that? We'll keep this reminders pane here so that we can see how that changes over time. So what I'm going to do here is, firstly, I'm going to retrieve a value from my cycle log. Okay, so all I need to do, ignore the top dictionary for now. The second dictionary, I'm going to type in here as the method key, get. This is the variable name, cycle log. The payload can be empty, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so this will show us an alert here. This action here, show us an alert to show the output that comes from this action. This action runs the memory shortcut. Okay, so use the run shortcut action, select memory from the list of shortcuts in your library. Okay, and the input is that dictionary. So this one right here that we were just looking at. Okay, so that gets passed in, and then we'll have a look at the shortcut result that we get from that. So we run that, and here is my result. You can see it's a string. Well, it's actually a dictionary um, being represented as a string. Okay, so it's exactly what we saw before. Right, so what am I gonna do next? Well, by virtue of getting that variable out, Shortcuts already converts the payload into a dictionary. So I use the get dictionary action here and I get the value for average speed. So we know average speed is a variable in my dictionary there. And then this final alert down the bottom right here, that's gonna show us that dictionary value. So let's run it all the way through. Pass in the dictionary, we get a result, okay. And you can see the result for average speed is 20 kilometers per hour. Great, so that did exactly what I was expecting it to do. Now what we want to do is update that variable. So we're 
updating the payload that is associated with the variable called cycle log. So this method now needs to be changed to add. Okay, and I'm passing in this dictionary at the top, you can see the dictionary right here, this one. We're going to make the number of rides 143 and we're going to change the average speed to 21 kilometers per hour. All I did here is I changed this. Let's run this. Okay, so there is no result because we didn't retrieve anything. And if you look in the note of my reminder, number of rides 143, average speed 21 kilometers per hour. So it did indeed store that. And of course, if we now simply change this to get, okay, and run it again, oops. Okay, for some reason, shortcuts is running in the background. Let's, let's just go with that. 143, 21 kilometers per hour, and the result 21 kilometers per hour. Okay, so just restarting shortcuts there. So as we saw, we were able to act, update the value that was stored in the shortcut. So that's how you would use it. You pass in a dictionary to tell the shortcut, are you adding or getting a variable? What's the variable name? If you are adding a new value to it, then obviously pass in your new value in the payload field. But if you're not doing it, if you're just getting it, then it doesn't really matter if that payload field is populated or not. So kind of use scenarios for this. What you would normally be doing is first getting the existing variable you do some computation with it and then you write that value back using the add method um, let's initialize a new variable entirely and see how that works as well so this time i'll just do a value i won't use a dictionary so we're going to add and we'll call this foobar and the payload will be Baz. Okay, so if we add this variable, that should go into the notes field for our reminder. There's no result again because I was adding a variable. So let's have a look in the reminder. And there you can see the variable foobar with the payload string baz so that's how we can add a new value and of course if we do get foobar then we should get baz right so obviously the dictionary value for average speed is not going to show anything but the shortcut result was exactly as expected so yeah that's how you can use persistent variables in shortcuts one thing that I left a comment here to remind me to say is that variable names are case sensitive. So if we change this to be lowercase in this case, we will not get a result, we'll get a null result. Okay, null result there because the variable names are case sensitive and by changing that to a lowercase l, the dictionary value wasn't able to be located. So make sure you use correct capitalization in your variable names.